Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 106 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, we're going to talk about the toolbar in Lightroom. Before I do that, just let me say that my videos are all free because many people help me out. If you're interested in helping me make the best free photography how-to videos possible, please look in the top right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see the letter I. Click on that I and you'll get more info on how you could help me out. Okay, the toolbar in Lightroom. A lot of people don't realize that this area directly below your image, whether whatever module you're in, that is the toolbar. If you don't see it, hit the T key on your keyboard and you'll toggle the toolbar off and on. Now, as you look at my toolbar, it's pretty plain. Nothing is there. That's because you could populate the toolbar with functions that you most often use and or leave off things you don't use. And we're going to go through a few of the different things you could put down there on the toolbar. Now this functionality where you could put different things on the toolbar and leave other things off is available in the library, the develop, and the map module. And some things will be avail available in one module and won't be available in another module. And we'll talk about that as we go. So we have the toolbar active. At the far right, you'll see there's this downward facing triangle. Click on that and you can see there's all these different choices. The first one is view modes. When I click on that, you'll see to the far left of the toolbar now we have several view modes. We have the grid view, the loop view, the compare view, the survey view, and the people view. So you could just quickly go from grid view, let's say, to survey view just to look at a single image. So if you often do that, you may want your toolbar to have those icons there and then you could quickly click on those. Below that is sorting. How do you want to sort the images that are down here in the film strip? Do you want them by aspect ratio, file type, the rating, all these different sort um, categories you could use and then you could choose to shoot the uh, sort them front to back or back to front depending on how you want to you know look at your category sort so we could have that on there as well below that is flagging uh, we could either flag the image with a pick or reject it below that is rating you could, you know, give it a one star rating to a five star rating right there with the stars just by clicking simply, I'm not mentioning, but you simply click on the stars. So we could change the rating or reject an image or select an image like that. Next is color label. So you could give it a specific color label. You could rotate the image if you so choose or need to. Below that is navigate. So you could just go through your images from left to right or right to left. Below that is the slideshow. Well, you could actually play a slideshow of all the images that are down here in the film strip. So when that is active, you'll see there's a little play button. When you click the play button, Lightroom will prepare and create the slideshow and then play the slideshow. And I happen to have some obnoxious music playing at the moment, but that's how you would do that. Below slideshow, is zoom so you could zoom in the image like in zoom out and stuff like that with that zoom tool if you find you're often zooming in to maybe to look at noise and look at sharpness and things like that it might benefit be a benefit to you to have the zoom slider there and below that is draw face region that's for facial recognition uh, you click on that Lightroom will find the faces. The faces it cannot find, you could actually draw a square around the face of a person and you're telling Lightroom that is the person's face and then you would give it a name, you know, the person's name hopefully. And then all future faces of that face that Lightroom sees in other images, Lightroom will know it's that person. And below that is the grid overlay. And right here is the grid overlay. You have to turn it on by clicking here. And then you could, you know, make your grid smaller, larger, whatever you want to do. So those are all the choices that are available in the library module. When we hop over to the develop module, we have those choices and one or two new ones. We have the view modes. 
And in this time, we just have the um, loop view, the compare view, and to you know swap them back and forth how you want to look side by side, like that, or like that, stuff like that, to maybe uh, decide which image is better than another image, something like that. We have flagging, which we had before. We have the rating, which we had before, the color label, navigate, all these are the same, slideshow, zoom, the grid overlay, and the one new thing we have is soft proofing. And soft proofing you would use if you're printing or if you're sending an image off to be viewed on other monitors, you might want to look at the soft proof of the image to see what colors may or may not display properly on specific types of monitors or may not be printed properly on specific types of printers with specific types of combinations of inks and papers. So that gets a little complicated, but I do have printer videos that explain what soft proofing is. So those are the choices under the develop module. We jump over to the map module and we only have a few choices. The first one is the map style. I have a hybrid map. You could have a road map, a satellite map, a terrain map, a light dark view of your map, just how it's rendered. I prefer a hybrid map myself. Then the next choice down is zoom, and I have that active already, so you could zoom in or zoom out. Below that is pin lock. All these are little pins right here and I took this image right here shooting that way but let's say I wanted to move it. You can move it, right? Well if you want these locked just click this padlock and then they won't be able to be moved. You can't move the pins. So you can't reposition them. Track I think that's called track log. Yes, track log. Okay, I'm going to actually do a video on track logging in the future. What that is, is you would get a third-party app for your smartphone, and you would use this when your camera isn't GPS enabled. What you mu must do is you must make sure that your camera's time and date are synced to your phone, so they have the same time and date. Then what you would do if you're out in New York and you're taking images all day, you would turn on your track log. Then what you would do is you would just take images like you normally do. Once you do that, when you come home, you export an, a file from your smartphone of your track log. Then you do is you would turn it on here and you would go to here and you would go to load tracking and what that's going to do is it's going to find that file you have to go on your computer and find the file you just saved from your smartphone and you take that file and load it in here and you'll actually get the track log let's say you know you're on the ferry and you went to Governor's Island then you went to Ellis Island then you went to Liberty Island and you came back so you'd have all this track then what you would do is you would select all the images that were taken that day then you would go down and you would set uh, auto tag the photos which is grayed out because I didn't load a track log and once you auto tag the photos it syncs the time each image was taken to your track log and you'll get these pins automatically populating your map and each image will be geotagged then and it will know where the image is taken so I will be doing future videos on that that's a pretty a uh, handy feature that a lot of people don't realize is even in Lightroom and that really helps those of us that have cameras that don't have built-in GPS. So that's it. That's the toolbar in Lightroom. A little longer of a video than I hoped for but I hope that taught you something you didn't know and you could populate that toolbar with things that will help you work in Lightroom a little more effectively and efficiently. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.